<laughs> if any of you have participated in theater, whether it's professional, community theater, you know that this film is your worst nightmare. Noises Off, released in 1992 and is based on a stage play released in 1982 of the same name, created by Michael Frey. And this film has an amazing all-star cast of Carol Burnett, Denholm Elliott, Julie Haggerty, Mary Lou Henner, Mark Lynn Baker, Christopher Reeve, John Ritter, Nicolette Sheridan, and Marco Kane. And I'm so happy whenever I get a film starring Marco Kane, it gives me the opportunity to do my Marco Kane impersonation, which I feel is actually pretty spot on because what you need to do is you need to make yourself sound like a bloody idiot while with a very obnoxious cockney accent and almost give yourself the patter of like a bird. You know, Michael Kine. Michael Kine, everyone. I'm mine. I'm Michael Kine. And I'm reviewing this film because it was a PayPal donation recommendation from a couple of, of my big, biggest supporters, Mr. and Mrs. Rusted Beetle. You two, I gotta tell you, you guys are absolutely insane with the size donation that you dropped and all of the recommendations that you've given me that you'll be seeing the rest of this month. I'm I'm speechless and I am forever humbled and, and grateful for all of your support and it's my honor to do all this stuff for you if you're willing to support me that way. If any of you are looking to support me and helping me build this channel into something bigger than what it's been for the last three years, or if you really want your movie recommendation to be pushed to the front of the line and be done as quickly as possible, you can make a PayPal donation on the main page of my YouTube channel. Let's click on the donate button. Any size donation will do, and you can attach your movie to your donation. And if I have access to it, I will get it done. I will get my review done as quickly as I possibly can. Lloyd Fellows is the director of a soon-to-be Broadway production called Nothing On. But as rehearsals begin to end and preview shows are starting, the tension between the cast members is at an all-time high. It seems almost impossible that they can get through rehearsing just one simple act. However, the play rolls on as usual, as all theater does, but as the play goes to a different city for preview showings, the show gets worse and worse, and the actors get more and more angry with each other, to the point where they all want to kill each other. So Lloyd Fellows has to come back to try to rescue the rehearsals. But in the mix of it all, he actually becomes part of the problem along with all of the actors on stage. And oh my god, if you have been part of any theatrical production in your life at any point, what you see in this movie is just, it's everything that you can imagine that would go wrong during a production goes wrong during this production. And it's uh, if you're into theater, it's your absolute worst nightmare. Now, this is my first time viewing Noises Off. I know, I'm a theater professor, and I've never watched the movie version of Noises Off, nor have I seen the play production of Noises Off, so I can tell you <laughs> just my credibility as a theater professor. <laughs> just lay off me, please. There are so many plays out there, and there's only so much time in the day for me to read and watch that stuff, so... Give me a break. But I couldn't be happier to finally watch this film. This is my type of humor. This is my type of theater. We have a bunch of over-exaggerated characters, a lot of crazy misconstrued plot lines, a lot of closing doors, in and out of doors, and we got a lot of mistaken identity, plots and subplots that are on their own separate trajectory, and then they all crisscross with each other until they all come to a nice happy ending resolution. Typically ending in some type of marriage, or maybe a character got a promotion at work, Whatever it is, the people get the the good stuff at the end of a farce. And what's really cool about this film is that it's a movie about a director and actors trying to put on a play. So we have the movie, and then we have the play within the movie. Or if you were watching the play version of this, we have the play itself, the overall picture of the play, and we have the play within the play. And that's a device that's, that goes back hundreds and hundreds of years, thousands of years. So it's a device that was created a while ago, and it still works today. And the concept here is brilliant. For those of you that have watched theater or watched a professional production from the audience side, there is a whole other show, especially when you have farces or big Broadway productions, musicals and things like that with a lot of pyrotechnics and special effects. There is a whole show going on behind the scenes, behind the set, that no one else sees other than the cast and crew members. And a lot of the times, 
that is actually more entertaining than what's in front of the curtain. I've been a part of my fair share of, of farces. Probably my, my best recollection of farce is a play that I was in called One for the Pot, which was about four identical twin brothers who are coming to this, this man's mansion to get an inheritance from their father that passed away, but they don't know that they are four identical twin brothers coming, like they don't know that they exist, and what I had to do, I played all four brothers. So at one point I had to be this person, and then I had to run on to the other side of the stage and become this other brother, and then another brother, and then another brother. At one point, all of them were on stage at the exact same time, we had body doubles on, on stage. It was one of the funnest, and I was probably, probably in the best shape of my life during that. <laughs> so you have hilarious dialogue and hilarious circumstances happening in front of the curtain, but behind the curtain, you have actors ripping off their clothes and doing quick changes, and the set crew is there trying to do their best to get the clothes on and to get the props where they need to be. Really, if you ever see a farcical show, yes, the actors in front of the curtain, they do a magnificent job, but for all those actors, there are several crew members that are, are just as important, and if they weren't there, the play would not be a success. I will always give Cameron, Sarah, and Caitlin credit for helping me out with that role for One for the Pot. Without them, I wouldn't have done anything on stage. But enough about me, let's talk about the movie, which I think was hilarious. It upsets me that the Rotten Tomatoes score for this film is not higher than what it is, because it absolutely should be. Although, I, I guess I do understand it because I, I guess you have to be kind of in the performing arts to get a lot of the inside lingo and inside just basically situations that almost every director and actor and crew member goes through during rehearsals and tech rehearsals for shows. And you also get to see the workings of a theatrical director and all of the egos that they have to kind of maneuver around when rehearsing a show. There are points where Michael Caine is having a good time and he thinks the play that he is watching and directing is absolutely hilarious. But then all of a sudden an actor will say, oh, we need to stop because I don't have motivation for crossing here, or I don't have motivation for picking up this plate and all the director wants it's it's one of the final rehearsals all the director wants is hey can we just get through rehearsing and running the first act please I just want this done so we can go get a coffee and we can take a break because I really have to go to the bathroom again I have been in that position and like I said before we have an amazing cast that really amplifies the egos of these of these actors and these types of actors. Carol Burnett, who I absolutely love, was famous from The Carol Burnett Show. I know her from the Broadway production of Moon Over Buffalo, actually a documentary that I used to show to my students called Moon Over Broadway, which showed the, the creation of a play from Paige to the final stage on Broadway, and she was the star of that of that farce. So I think she's absolutely wonderful. I'll always remember her in the Scarlett O'Hare curtain rod dress when she parodied Gone with the Wind on the Carol Burnett show. That's classic. And here she is hamming it up and doing her Carol Burnett thing. We have John Ritter here, who's a great comedic actor in his own right, passed away, oh gosh, when did he pass away? Almost a decade ago? I know him from the Problem Child films. That's where I'm most familiar with him. And I think he's, well, he was a fantastic actor, great comedic timing, and he plays really like the straight man of this show. He's the one kind of with his head attached to his shoulders most of the time. Denholm Elliott, who plays Marcus Brody from the Indiana Jones film, is here. He's the drunk of the entire cast, and they're constantly trying to, to get him from not drinking whiskey or not drinking Jameson on stage or behind the set. And Christopher Reeve. And as I'm watching this, I'm trying to wreck my brain. I don't think I have seen any film with Christopher Reeve in it other than Superman, or the Superman films. I think this was my first non-Superman acting role for Christopher Reeve, for me. And gosh, that guy was super funny. You can kind of see his comedic timing and his his funny bone while he plays Clark Kent in the Superman films, and you get a lot of that here, just of course amplified because this is a farce. Now the film, it's a little tricky because we repeat the first act of the play within the movie three times throughout this entire thing. However, each time, of course, is told from a different 
perspective. We have the first time when they're trying to run it straight through and they're just kind of stopping, start stopping, and the director just wants to get through and they're going through the lines as written. The second time we view the show from backstage and we see everyone come in and out, slamming doors, and we hear the dialogue being performed for a preview audience, but there's a little conflict and scuffle going on behind the scenes. And then the third time that they run it, and we're getting to the climax of the show, they're kind of just fucking around and they don't care, the props are not set, and they're set in different places, and basically they have to improvise to make sense of why props are not in the correct places, why people are not coming in at the correct times, and you can see the stage manager off stage, she's just going, what the hell's going on? Just throws the script down, it's like, I don't know. It's a stage manager's worst nightmare and probably the greatest stage manager I've ever had, Emily. If this would have happened under her watch, she would have shot some bitches. The play is an absolute disaster. The only thing that I could dock this movie on is that after the whole incident in Cleveland where nothing goes right during the rehearsal, all of a sudden we just get to the opening night on Broadway and again, here's Deus Ex Machina. Everything is awesome and it resolves itself. Kind of just out of nowhere and we just cut right to the end. And I was like, oh, so what happened after the really, really bad time to now when everything is so good? I want to say something is missing there between the final time that they run the show to the end of the movie. I mean, it's only like five minutes, but something's missing there. Again, it's farce. I'm expecting a happy ending, but still I want to see the journey of going from the deepest, darkest despair of the entire process to where we get to the happy ending. I want to see all of that, but we just kind of jump all the way to the happy ending. So a little jarring in my opinion. But other than that, I think this film is wonderful. I wish I'd known about it sooner. I would definitely show this to my students. I think this is just a great example of theater, and I think it's a great example of farce, and just how much fun theater can be. And you also get the, the look behind the scenes. Again, in a farcical way, but still kind of accurately representing what happens behind the scenes. I'm gonna give Noises Off four and a half out of five Blu-rays. It's good. It's good. It's good. All right, everyone, since this was a PayPal recommendation, I had to kind of shoehorn it into my schedule, so we will continue on the original schedule that I had set up before this. If any of you have recommendations of films that you want me to review on here, you can leave your comment below this video or go to my Facebook page, my Instagram, or my Twitter and leave your recommendation there. If I have access to it, I will watch, review it, and give you a shout out on the channel. So guys, have you seen Noises Off? What did you think about it? Or if you've never seen it before and you stumbled across it because of this video, then comment below, let me know what you thought about it. And as always, if you like what you see here, if you like my take on movies then hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell so you know the next time i release the next movie review so guys i will see you next time but in the meantime be well be good to each other and go watch a movie take care guys